He, he said the gray building, right? Hi. Today we recap the plot of 2005 science fiction comedy The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Spoilers ahead. The movie begins with the second smartest animal on Earth, making the decision to leave before its destruction. Since people constantly mistake their warnings for fancy gimmicks, their last communication is simply so long and thanks for all the fish. We meet Arthur Dent, who wakes one morning to find a demolition crew at his home, ready to make way for a bypass. Lying down in front of the bulldozer, Arthur's best friend Ford Prefect arrives with a shopping cart full of beer. He tells Arthur that they need to leave since his home is about to be destroyed, and Arthur simply assumes he is talking about the house. Ford offers his beer and peanuts to the construction crew to keep them distracted, and takes Arthur to a local pub. He explains that he is from another planet, reminding Arthur when they first met, he was trying to shake hands with a car. Arthur pulls out his phone and looks at a photo of himself with a young woman named Trisha McMillan. They met at a party a while back and hit it off, until a funny dressed man told Trisha he was from another planet, and invited her to see his spaceship. Ford buys a last round of drinks for everyone, but declares that the world is ending in minutes. Arthur returns home to discover the construction crew has already demolished his home, and fails to notice a giant cube spaceship overhead. An alien identifies himself as Jelts of the Planning Council, and explains that plans for Earth's destruction have been on display for 50 years. He issues the command to commence destruction in order to make way for a hyperspace bypass. Ford grabs a towel from the rubble and raises his thumb, transporting the two aboard the Vogon ship. Ford gives Arthur his towel and tells him they are among the most useful tools a hitchhiker can have. He hands Arthur a copy of the movie title, a controversial book containing all known information in the universe, and uses his towel to help send out an SOS. Now we'll get a signal. Meanwhile Arthur studies Vogons, a terribly structured and bureaucratic beings, but not evil. The book also tells him that on no account should you allow a Vogon to read poetry to you since it's the third worst in the galaxy. Ford inserts a yellow slug into Arthur's ear, which enables the host to comprehend any language they encounter. The Vogons discover Arthur and Ford, and take them in for interrogation. Jeltz reads them some of his poetry, which sends Ford into seizures, while leaving Arthur perplexed. Arthur tries to charm Jeltz by telling him that he enjoys it, but Ford and Arthur are sentenced to exile, and tossed into space. Another ship appears and snatches them up, transforming them between random objects before reverting to their regular selves. The ship's computer tells Trisha that it's collected two hitchhikers, and she notifies the ship's commander Zaphod Beeblebrox of the intruders. I wasn't talking to you. Marvin, a perpetually melancholy android due to his personality software, is reluctantly sent to collect them. Don't talk to me about your life. Zaphod recognizes Ford as his half-brother, and explains that he is the galaxy's new president, though he abducted himself during his inauguration and stole the ship. <laughs> Trisha appears and cheerfully greets Arthur. Trisha has changed her name to Trillian, and shows Arthur around the ship as Zaphod and Ford share a drink, <laughs> while two mice scurry away from her backpack. A second head emerges from under Zaphod's primary, yelling obscenities and slapping Arthur across the face with a third arm, while Zaphod threatens him with disembowelment if he tells her what happened to Earth. I pull your spleen out through your throat. Zaphod summons everyone to the viewing deck and begins playing a recording, explaining that millions of years ago, two pan-dimensional entities Fook and Lunkwill built a supercomputer called Deep Thought to answer the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, which took 7.5 million years to process. Deep Thought revealed the answer to be 42. Since they never properly asked the ultimate question, so Deep Thought built another supercomputer that will provide the question. Zaphod says that it is his objective to uncover the ultimate question, and that he is using the ship's improbability drive to jump to random times and places in search of the computer's planet. Zaphod activates the drive, and the spacecraft descends into improbability, arriving at its destination as a ball of yarn. Wow. They arrive at Planet Vilvotal 6, home of Zaphod's presidential rival Hama Kavula. Hama Kavula! The gang departs the spacecraft to find Kavula officiating a mass, honoring a god that sprang into existence after a huge sneeze. Bless you. Kavula takes the group to his office where he reveals that he is a creature made out of a torso walking on robotic legs with no real eyes. He informs Zaphod that he has the coordinates to the planet he seeks, on the condition that he return with a rare gun for him, and to assure Zaphod's return. Oh no! Kavula takes his second head. The party is suddenly ambushed by Vogons, sent by Galactic Vice President Questioner Rontok to save Zaphod from himself. And they capture Trillian. Ford assumes leadership because Zaphod is functioning on half a brain, and is unable to think coherently without lemon juice. They track the Vogon fleet to their homeworld of Vogosphere 
and they all descend to the planet's surface in a small pod. They land near the Vogon ship, and when approaching, begin to get smacked in the face by the local spade-like species. Anytime they have a thought, so they make a run for it. Arthur bursts into the Vogon facility brandishing Marvin's arm as a weapon, but the official just refers them to robot repairs. Trillian discovers that Earth was destroyed, and that Zaphod approved the plans by accident. Love and kisses. She is sentenced to death and hung over a cage to be eaten, only to be freed at the last second due to Zaphod's presidential approval. She shouts at Zaphod for signing the paperwork, and berates Arthur for not telling her sooner. But he threatened me! Trillian and Arthur reconcile when they return to the ship, before the improbability drive is triggered by the two white mice. The spacecraft travels through hyperspace until it reaches Magrathea, however an automated message apologizes for the planet's closure. Because they ignore it, the hologram informs them that two thermonuclear missiles have been sent to their location. The spacecraft begins to execute evasive maneuvers, before Arthur hits the improbability drive. No! Instead of traveling across time and space, the missiles transform into a giant sperm whale and a bowl of petunias. Oh, what's happening? Who am I? Why am I here? The unfortunate whale has little time to think about what's going on before brutally colliding with Magrathea. The bowl of petunias just thinks to itself, No, not again. When the gang lands on the planet's surface, they uncover three portals with no indication of which one transports them to deep thought. Trillian takes a leap of faith and dives into the first one active. Followed by Zaphod and Ford, the gateway then closes, leaving Arthur stranded with only Marvin for company. Zaphod, Ford and Trillian discover that they've selected the correct gateway, and find a very bored deep thought watching TV. Zaphod asks if she's found out the final question yet, but she says the computer she made for that was destroyed to make room for a hyperspace bypass. She then gives them the rifle demanded by Kavula, the point of view gun. Built by deep thought but commissioned by a group of intergalactic furious housewives. Trillian shoots Zaphod with it, revealing to him everything from her point of view, before a door opens and the two mice emerge. Hey, it's okay. A stranger appears to Arthur and reveals himself as Slarty Bartfast, informing Arthur that he has something to show him. A portal brings them to a loading bay where Bart reveals that he is an engineer, and that his firm creates planets. He shows Arthur around the floor where planets including Earth Mark II are being built. Arthur is taken to his home and finds Ford, Trillian, and Zaphod all waiting for him inside with the mice. Earth creature. The mice give Arthur tea and explain they were nearly 5 billion years into their testing to find out the ultimate question, when Earth blew up. As a result they commissioned Earth 2 in order to continue their trials, but they need Arthur's brain to finish it. More tea. The mice have drugged the tea, and strap Arthur down in order to cut out his brain. Arthur begins to come up with questions that have the answer 42, before coming up with one that the mice like. That's not bad! He begins to ask if Trillian is the girl for him, saying yes and that he loves her. Perplexed by Arthur's love babble, hey, the mice decide to take his brain anyway. <laughs> Arthur manages to get free in time, so and crushes the mice, revealing their true appearance. Arthur finds that the Vogons have surrounded his home, and they begin to fire upon him. Marvin insults the Vogons for being the worst shots in the galaxy, before getting struck in the back of the head. The <laughs> he then rises and shoots the point of view gun at the Vogons, who all drop to the ground depressed. After the fight, Slarty appears, asking Arthur if there is anything he would like altered on New Earth. Arthur declines, and asks Trillian if she wants to go somewhere. With Ford recommending a good restaurant at the end of the galaxy. The gang disembark, activating the improbability drive once more. And the movie ends. The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy was directed by Garth Jennings and based upon the book of the same name by Douglas Adams. Oh, come on. We have normality. Starring Martin Freeman, Sam Rockwell, Most Def, Zoe Deschanel, Bill Nye, Anna Chancellor, and John Malkovich. With voices of Stephen Fry, Helen Mirren, Thomas Lennon, Richard Griffiths, Ian McNeese, Bill Bailey, and Alan Rickman. Anyway, come on. The Bowl of Petunias is revealed in the novels to be a creature named a Gregg, who is continuously killed by Arthur Dent and reincarnated. The names of all five books are mentioned throughout the movie. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Restaurant at the End of the Universe. Life, the Universe, and Everything and so long and thanks for all the fish. With mostly harmless, only appearing in the deleted scenes. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. You look great. You're doing well. You've grown, obviously.